So we did the zeroth order reaction. The next one we're going to do is a first order. This is hands down the most seen in nature uh, that you're going to see. Uh, very serious. You'll see this one in lab as well. OK, so again, same reaction. A reactant goes to P products. But now, the rate law is K times A to the first power. Uh, and again, that's the uh, loss of the change in concentration of A over the change in time. Or uh, now it's here where uh, those of you who are not interested in calculus can zone out. Minus dA dt. This is called the differential rate law. Differential rate law for the four first order reaction. OK, let me rearrange this a little bit. So we've got, uh, I want to do this. I guess I'll put k dt here, integrate that, and minus dA uh, over a here. Integrate that from 0 to time t, and from initial concentration a naught to the concentration at time t. What's the integral of 1 over x? The natural log. Yep, so kt equals minus the natural log of a over a naught, just plugging in the points of the integral. OK, those of you who zoned out, come back to us. All right, this is one form of the integrated rate law for the first order reaction. Uh, I want to rearrange it in how many different, two different forms that uh, kind of work for us. So this is one form. If you rearrange it a little bit, the natural log of x over y can be arranged how? Uh, OK. Uh, <laughs> natural log of x minus natural log y. OK. I'll pretend that's what you said. Good job. <laughs> OK. So I'm going to move kt to the right, this to the left, the natural log of a minus the natural log of a naught equals minus kt, or natural log of a equals minus kt plus natural log a naught. And then one more form, again starting uh, at the top one again. This time I'm going to solve for a, uh, so I'm going to move the exponent to the other side. Uh, so let's put minus kt equals natural log of a over a naught. Uh, solve for a. a equals a naught e to the minus kt. So let me circle these. You're going to use these bottom two the most often. All these are the integrated rate law. Okay, all those are the integrated rate law. They both come from this top equation. Okay. Um, it depends what you're going to be solving for, which one you'll use more often. But this is not a constant decay like zero order. This is an exponential decay. So first order is an exponential decay. Uh, so it's going to decay like e to the minus x power, that kind of ball. Let me graph that so you see what it looks like. If you plotted uh, a o versus t, and here's a naught, it's going to fall as an exponent, a curvaceous exponential fall. That's not helpful to us. Okay. That'll be helpful, and that's this equation right here. This will be helpful if you want to calculate the concentration of A specifically. So if the question says this is first order, find the concentration of A, you're going to use this equation right there. However, sometimes you'll need to plot this equation. So how do I make this into a line? Take a look at the second equation circle, this one right here. If I plot natural log of A, versus t, I will get what sort of plot? 
It'll be a line. And what is that plot called in math? I will pretend you said semi-log plot. Awesome. Guys, genius. Okay, natural log of A versus time. And uh, it'll be a line. <coughs> like that. What is this point right there at the axis? It's not a naught, it's natural log of a naught. That's the y-intercept. Uh, if you want to look, if you rewind on your paper a little bit, <coughs> this is y equals mx plus b. The y-intercept is natural log a naught. m is going to be minus k, or the slope. You want to go back to seventh grade algebra. So this is the slope equals negative k. So if I find the slope, is that equal to the rate constant? Not exactly. I multiply by minus 1 to get the rate constant. But this is an extremely convenient way to get the rate constant if you're given data. Given data, you plot it out, you can get the slope uh, from the integrated rate law. Let's also do half-life. It has the same definition here, but remember it's a different kind of decay here. Uh, it's an exponential decay. So again, time required for half the reactant to be consumed. So that's where A goes to half A naught. Or I'm going to use this equation, natural log of A over A naught equals minus KT or natural log of one half, I'm going to substitute in for a naught, or for a, one half a naught over a naught. Now you'll notice, and this is the integrated rate law, that was the first one I had circled, the a naughts cancel. So in this case, it's not going to depend on the initial concentration. That's irrelevant in this case, uh, in contrast to the zeroth order. This is going to be the natural log of one half, or minus the natural log of what? Two. Okay. Uh, uh, natural log of or log of x to the y is y natural log x. So I just this is two to the minus one power. So you bring the minus one out. Equals minus k t. Or let's solve for t. t equals a natural log of 2 over k. And remember, this is a half life, so I'll put a little 1 half there. And if you calculate out, the natural log of 2 is 0.0693 for k. And that's the formula for the half life. It's only dependent on the rate constant in this case. So like your an example, your refrigerant, uh, it gives off CFCs into the atmosphere, which are dangerous for the ozone layer. Its half-life of decomposition is really important because if it decomp decomposes before it gets to the ozone, you're okay. But if it doesn't and it has longer half-life, which it does, <laughs> then it'll get to the ozone layer and do a little bit of damage. 